Hey folks, I just wanted to give some thoughts on um, just a general approach when you start thinking about designing with jewelry, designing for jewelry. And so, um, you know, I think it's good to just start with basic shapes. Um, if we look to our kind of our a lot of our jewelry magazines, you can see that there, there's kind of a basic shape form that they often just start working from and then kind of launching off their design off from that. You know, it doesn't have to, um, You know, and so there's tools that you can look to to kind of help you with that. And indeed, a lot of times these really basic shapes sit very nicely on the body. Of course, what you make often conforms to the body. But when we look at nature... We, we often find those basic shapes, and then things become elaborate from there. So kind of as a guideline, I think it's, um, it's good. You know, we have templates. You can find many things around your house that you can maybe start by tracing shapes from, but then you want to embellish and alter so that it doesn't end up looking like cookie cutter. Because indeed, cookie cutter jewelry tends, you know, it's just um, looks like a cookie cutter, right? It doesn't have that artistic statement that we are looking for. So here again, just really beautiful, beautiful um, symmetry here based on circle designs. But when you're planning that, again, you can start that out with templates and circles and tracing circles and kind of going from there using rulers. So that said, guiding principle number one, think basic shapes and then elaborate and alter into them. Change it up, shake it up from there. But I think you can use mini templates to kind of help you if the drawing, um, with the drawing process. So I have started just a simple design sheet. And so these, these shapes that I'm starting to design from, this is like a canning jar lid, right? And I was be able to get an interior shape as well as my exterior shape. So this might be really nice to use with borders, right? Here is, uh, this is my little collection of um, template shapes that I can play with. Okay, here's my Wonder Woman 10, right? Okay, and that makes a really nice template. Maybe I can make that as a for a bracelet, certainly would make a nice pendant shape. Here is from a lid from my bug spray that I had, right? Again, that would make a lovely pendant, could play with an earring, as an earring. This shape here, I think that can make nice drop for necklace or um, earring shape. This was my handle from a spoon. This was the spoon of my spoon right here, right? So I think I did touch uh, earlier when I, often when I start to trace my shapes, I'll, you know, carefully try and give myself a guideline border. 
We've talked a little bit about the implied border so that if I were to, um, certainly I could design something off of the edge here and not have that. But if I wanted to use, have interior shapes, I could then, you know, I'm, my shapes aren't going to wander off into my border area. depending what you want. But very often I just kind of give myself that guideline so that, again, my shapes don't wander off there. Okay. Maybe I can use little bits from other things that I could trace out for certain curves, and that will give you a nice, clean line. Okay. Um, my other tip is that, you know, if you don't have these, you know, a collection of junk that you can work from, I have lots of junk, um, I like to make little templates. And so I, I think you can see this is just from a manila folder that I found. You can use junk mail. You can even use just regular tracing paper. Um, but I like a little card stock if you've got it. And so when I am making a template, I um, fold it. And then when I, I, you know, I cut it with my scissors. I like to, when I cut, I'm kind of cutting into the curve. So I, for me, I, so I don't get it all choppy, right? Kind of move it as I'm cutting. Um, any rate, it's nice because then you have your center marks. And I mean, this might seem like I'm stating the obvious, but um, when I use this, I can just give myself that little tick mark where that the center mark would be. And then I know where my center is, of course. And I can work from that. And so that can be really helpful. Um, so sometimes, um, you know, I have a circle and I want to divide it up and I usually at least kind of try to know where my center is, right? But here's another good little jewelry kit. If you trick, if you hold it up to the light, let me see where my light is, I guess above, huh? Then I can shine light through it, and I can line up my two halves of the circle, like so, right? And that's a great way to get at the center, All right? Indeed, you will see that I have a, um, oh, geez, is it in here? Oh, I don't think it's in here. Okay. There will be a little um, circle template to ha to show you how to divide up circles. I'll make a quick little video um, so that you know we have that on video. Um, but it will be attached within the assignment here, or the folder rather. Okay. So again, um, using, you know, cutting, you can use the positive space. That can be really nice. Then you can kind of use these curves over and over again. And that is something that will bring unity to your designs. You know, that repetition of curves. Let's see, it doesn't all have to be same curve. Let's see, I'm just playing. And so when I'm playing with my big shapes, my basic shapes, um, I, sorry, drawing and talking. Um, you know, again, I'm editing into it. I'm exploring. I think it's really hard to come up with the big idea first right? So I really encourage you just to kind of get some shapes down and start playing into those shapes, right? Explore your way. So again, we're doing, we're going to be creating 12 designs. And so while I want you to have it um, to be 
um, not so, look like a cookie cutter. We will use kind of some templated shapes. Like if you're using a circle, you would of course use a template. Never draw a circle freehand. Okay, and you can do that. Um, sure, you can do it while you're exploring ideas, but sometimes it's just a little easier to get some things to trace in front of you. Okay, that's that spiel. There'll be more later.